welcome to church. What a joy it is for us to share in worship with you today here at St. Mark's. I'm Margie Schunk. And I'm Dick Schunk. We're excited about what God is doing among us. We pray that you will not only enjoy the service today, but that your life of faith will be enriched by this time that we share together. It's good to be with you today, joining together for worship. And as we worship today, the first Sunday of the month, we share in the sacrament of Holy Communion. If you didn't remember to stop by the kitchen and pick up some bread or crackers and a beverage, this might be the time to pause this video and head towards the kitchen. Today is the start of a new worship series entitled All In with a question mark. For the next eight weeks, we will be exploring together what it means to be an authentic person of faith and a follower of Jesus Christ as we all move into the post-pandemic era. Today's theme is choosing to sign on. We're living in a society that's rapidly becoming a post-religious world where even the label of Christian has become tarnished and at times even betrayed. Younger generations honestly don't know, they have no awareness of how their personal lives can be improved and our communities be healed by active involvement in the life of faith and a faith community such as St. Mark's. So what do we do? How do we offer an invitation that can be heard and accepted? Over the next two months, 
I invite you to join me in a voyage of exploration as to how we make our faith real, both for ourselves and for the wider community in a post-pandemic world. Now, Dean and Jim Strathdee will lead us all in singing, Come Let Us Worship and Bread for the Journey. And then Barry White will read today's scripture reading. Let us worship, come let us worship, come let us worship our God. Come let us worship, come let us worship, come let us worship our God. Come let us worship, come let us worship. Scripture lesson today is from the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 24 through 28. Then Jesus said to his disciples, All who want to come after me must say no to themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. All who want to save their lives will lose them, but all who lose their lives because of me will find them. Why would people gain the whole world but lose their lives? What will people give in exchange for their lives? For the human one is about to come with the majesty of his father with his angels. And then he will repay each one for what that person has done. I assure you that some standing here won't die before they see the human one coming in his kingdom. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. At the risk of sounding like an over-enthusiastic salesperson, I have to say that it's a complete mystery to me as to why the huge throngs of our community are not beating on the doors wanting to be part of the St. Mark's Faith experience. Just look at what we're offering. Firstly, we're offering a loving, inclusive community of support and care that invites everyone to pursue with integrity their own spiritual journey focused in the love we know in the God of Jesus Christ. We educate each other into becoming healthier human beings, both emotionally and physically. And secondly, we give support and guidance in enabling people to be an agent of God's love and grace through bringing healing and social change. We together seek a world filled with real peace, rooted in authentic justice. We see that words in themselves are not enough. Walking the talk is central to a life of faith that has integrity. At St. Mark's, we don't beat people over the head with a belief system or require that they sign on the dotted line. Rather, we invite people into a community, a family, bringing hope and healing both to our own lives and to the world. Prayer, meditation, reflection are all part of 
generating inner peace in our hearts. Who could refuse such an opportunity? Indeed, we've routinely had visitors coming to St. Mark's saying that St. Mark's is the best kept secret in Sacramento. And if only more people knew, we'd be inundated with people seeking a role in building God's beloved community. Today's scripture reading, which we just heard, comes immediately after the interaction between Jesus and his disciples at a place called Caesarea Philippi. It's a small town 20 miles north of the Sea of Galilee. It was called Caesarea because it was home to a temple dedicated to Caesar Augustus. It was previously the location for temples dedicated to the gods Baal and Pan. So it was a spiritual and a political hotspot. Not the least because several Roman emperors chose to spend vacations there. Matthew tells us that it was in this cultural and religious crossroads of Caesarea that Jesus read, raised the question, who do people say that I am? And famously, Peter responded, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. This is a tipping point moment in the whole story of the Jesus event. As that inner group of followers of Jesus recognize the historic significance of their teacher and friend, Jesus then says to them, all who want to come after me must say no to themselves, take up their cross and follow me. The language of taking up a cross, of course, is most likely coming directly from the community within which Matthew, the writer of the gospel, was writing 40 or more years later, following the story of Jesus carrying his own cross to his crucifixion. But we understand well what Matthew is wanting to tell us about the call of Jesus in this historic moment. Jesus is saying to them and to us, you have to be ready to grapple with the tough stuff. You have to be ready to suffer for a greater good. You'll be encountering resistance and evil in many forms. And then Jesus says, all who lose their lives because of me will find them. Central to the teaching and being of Jesus is the notion that happiness and fulfillment don't result from a life lived in acquiring wealth, possessions, power. There may be some fleeting delight, but rather real joy comes as a result of tuning into the needs of other people and responding with compassion and care. Helping to correct the impacts of sickness, oppression, injustice and violence brings much more happiness and fulfillment than acquiring more wealth and possessions. And tuning into the needs of other people rather than simply your own makes you into a person who is loved and respected because of who you are rather than the wealth or power you possess. Engaging the real needs of children, of immigrants, of refugees, of victims of racism, sexism, and heterosexism, responding to the needs of people who don't have housing and health care. All of this creates a healing atmosphere for everyone involved, those who give and those who receive. As the prayer of St. Francis reminds us, it's in giving that we receive, in pardoning that we are pardoned. A spirit of forgiveness and grace reaps a harvest of goodwill and love. So the question I'm inviting everyone to ask yourself today is simply this. Are you all in for this agenda of spiritual renewal? Are you ready to take the good news of Jesus Christ and make it real in, in the, your own life as well as the communities of which we're all a part? Are you prepared for the ride of a lifetime, challenging assumptions, shaking foundations to insist on the ways of compassion and justice? Are you prepared to go deep inside your own heart and soul to unearth all of your connections to the spirit of the living God? Are you ready to go places you never expected to go, to do things you never expected to do, to say things that you never expected to say, and to meet with people who rock your boat of your own living and being? Talking of which, let me introduce you to David Richmond, Franklin McCain, Isel Blair Jr. and Joseph McNeil. These four men, along with a huge team of other women and men, 
are the African Americans who in February 1960 refused to leave the F.W. Woolworth lunch counter in Greensboro, North Carolina. They refused to move from the whites only counter and were verbally and physically abused, beaten, spat upon, but they'd been well trained. And they sat in silence for weeks, refusing to move and refusing to respond. Eventually, Woolworths changed their policy and the sit-in ended. Everyone could come to the counter and be served. Sometimes it takes a willingness to endure pain and indignity to insist on the ways of Jesus. This team was supported with love, prayer, and finances from a host of other people. So many of us are in a supporting role who are the more visible ones. I invite you now to prayerfully reflect on your life and the ways in which you focus on the ways of God and the ways of Jesus. There's a famous prayer of Saint, of Saint Ignatius. Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as deserve, to give and to not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to ask for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except to know that I am doing your will. This is what it means to be all in for God. I invite you now to join me in prayer. Let's pray together. Holy God, we pray that you will pour out the living water of your spirit upon your people and especially upon your church in the world as we adjust to a rapidly changing society, especially in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. Give us the humility and the courage we need to seek unity where, where we are divided, to seek confidence where we're afraid. Give us the grace to exclude no one. Remind us always that it is only through your gracious love that we can find peace with you. Holy God, we pray that you will pour out the living water of your spirit upon the nations of the world. Help us to find new non-violent ways of building peace and real justice between the nations. Give us your grace so that the powerful may surrender some of their power to the very wealthy that they may surrender some of their wealth. And to those who express hatred, prejudice and violence to find healing for their souls. We pray as we must for the nations of Syria and Yemen, where war and violence continue. We pray for the nation of India, as everyone there wrestles with the terrible reality of a rapidly spreading COVID-19 pandemic. Holy God, we pray that you will bring healing and the living water of your presence upon our communities and upon all communities around the world. Help us, we pray, not to be afraid in bringing healing to our world. Help us not to be anxious in showing kindness to strangers. Help us to love those who are on the edges of our society. Give to us the spirit that was in Jesus, drawing people in close, bringing healing and hope. And so, O oh God, we lift in your presence those known to us who need our prayers of love and support this day, so that they may sense your nearness and our concern. Holy God, we pray that you will touch the St. Mark's community, that we may always be faithful in responding to your call, always be ready to hear and to serve. Give us your grace, we pray. 
may we bring healing to many lives and hope to our damaged world. And so now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us as we say together, our Creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, as we prepare ourselves for the Sacrament of Holy Communion, uh, Mark Sorter will be leading us all in singing. Come share the Lord. Please join in singing along. We gather here in Jesus' name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through the loving Son, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. No one is a stranger here. from the dead. The one we love the most is now our gracious host. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. And now I invite you to share with me in the service of Holy Communion. A reminder that everybody is welcome at this table, and that means you, whoever you are, whatever your life has been, and whatever you're feeling today. God is here with us. May our hearts be filled with celebration. We give God thanks because God is here with us, with you, wherever you may be. May our hearts be filled with celebration as we thank God for life and faith in this community. Holy God, your strong and loving presence fills the universe. You created the planets and the stars and called them good. You created the oceans and the plants and the animals and human beings, and you called them all good. Even when we turned against you and forgot your love, even when we do that right now, you still call us good. And you help us all every day to make changes in our lives and to follow your ways of love and grace. And so we give you thanks as we gather at your table. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, so you have embraced us with your love. And you have filled us with your spirit and with a longing for a peace and a justice that will endure and last forever. On the night when Jesus was betrayed, Jesus met with his disciples to share a meal. And they gathered around the table together. And it was at the end of the meal that we're told that Jesus took bread. And then he broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take this broken bread and eat it. This is like my body, which will be broken for you. When you eat it, please 
remember me. And also at the end of the meal, he took a cup of wine from the table. We, we tend to have grape juice so that we can include everybody in this meal together. Jesus took the chalice from the table and said, when you drink from this cup, you take part in the new life that I give you. It is the cup of joy bringing a promise of new life. As you drink, please remember me. And so, O oh God, we pray that as we share this bread and this cup, these gifts you have given us, that we may experience the love and grace that can fill our bodies, fill our hearts and souls and minds, and bring that healing power of your grace so that we may know your living presence in our lives. And so take the bread and tear a piece of bread and remember that this is the bread of life. As you take the cup, remember that this is the promise of Jesus to be with us always. This is the cup of salvation. And so as we come to the close of this service, I invite you to join me in a prayer thanking God for God's presence with us and God's grace filling our lives. Loving God, as this worship experience comes to a close, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with the spiritual food that is your grace that we receive in this precious sacrament. Prepare us now to be a people who are confident that we are forgiven, healed, renewed, and filled with your compassion and confidence. So that as your spirit guides us in the days and years ahead, we may be certain that we can proclaim your love to the world and that we are all in with your plans for the world and for our lives. We give you thanks, O oh God, in the name of Jesus our Christ. Amen.